Hey guys, how you all doing today? I'm back, I'm back, you know what I mean? And today we're going to be watching the Battle of Do, 1509, Portuguese Ottoman Wars. Seems like those Ottoman got around, you know what I mean? Or do I say Ottoman? <laughs> Welcome to Mr. Giant Reacts, a take, a take, a take, and I'm Mr. Giant. And uh, without further ado, let's jump right into this video. Let's YouTube and Sim Simmer. The Battle of Dew, sometimes referred as the Second Battle of Chal, was a naval battle fought on February 3rd, 1509 in the Arabian Sea, near the port of Dew, India, between the Portuguese Empire and a joint fleet of the Sultan of Gujarat, the Mamluk Burji Sultanate of Egypt, the Zamorin of Kalakit with support of Ottomans, the Republic of Venice and the Republic of Ragusa. The Portuguese victory was critical, Mamluks and Arabs retreated, easing the Portuguese strategy of controlling the Indian Ocean to route trade down the Cape of Good Hope, circumventing the traditional spice route controlled by the Arabs and the Venetians through the Red Sea and Persian Gulf. After the battle, Portugal rapidly captured key ports in the Indian Ocean like Goa, Ceylon, Malacca, and Ormuz, crippling the Mamluk Sultanate of Egypt and the Gujarat Sultanate. No, I, you know, what a lot of people fail to realize too, you know, and I know but being in Europe they probably know this, but here, people, uh, and I'm going to mention that sometimes at work, I have conversations and I mentioned that the Portuguese were once a superpower uh, back in the day, people are like, what? Because they, they're so quiet now, you know what I mean? And uh, the fact that they had one of the biggest and baddest naval forces of all times, you know, to win wars like this and to control the slave, the, uh, the trade at the time, you know what I mean? Uh, to conquer certain places in Africa and of course some in, uh, in the Caribbean because, you know, there's still like the small colonies of Port uh, or former colonies of Portugal there, but people, they just don't understand that, you know, superpowers come and go. They don't last forever. And they don't go away completely, but they don't have, they don't wield the same power as they used to. They come and go. It's an inevitability in life, you know. Greatly assisting the growth of the Portuguese Empire and setting its trade dominance for almost a century until it was taken during the Dutch-Portuguese Wars and the Battle of Swali won by the British East India Company in 1612. It marks the beginning of the European colonialism in Asia. It also marks the spillover of the Christian-Islamic power struggle in and around the Mediterranean Sea and the Middle East into the Indian Ocean which was the most important region for international trade at the time. Background Since Vasco da Gama arrived in 1498, the Portuguese had been fighting Calicut while allying with its local rival kingdom of Cochin, where they established their headquarters. The northern region of Gujarat, mainly Kampat, was even more important. The Gujarat Sultanate was an essential intermediary in east-west trade, between the Red Sea, Egypt and Malacca. Gujarati were important middlemen bringing spices from the Maluku Islands as well as silk from China, and then selling them to the Egyptians and Arabs. In 1505, the King of Portugal, Manuel I sent his first viceroy, Dom Francisco de Almeida with 21 vessels to strengthen the fledgling Portuguese empire in East Africa and India. When Portugal threatened his field, Sultan Mahmud Bagada of Gujarat allied with the Kashikoju Samutiri. He then asked his trade partners, the Mamluk Sultanate, for help. In 1507, Portuguese forces under command of Afonso de Albuquerque had conquered Socotra in the mouth of the Red Sea and, for a short time, Ormuz in the Persian Gulf. Portuguese intervention was seriously disrupting trade in the Indian Ocean, threatening Muslim as well as Venetian interests, as the Portuguese became able to undersell the Venetians in the spice trade in Europe. The Mamluks and their European trade partners, the Venetians, had become wealthy from monopolizing the flow of spices from India to Europe. Venice broke diplomatic relations with Portugal and started to look at ways to counter its intervention in the Indian Ocean sending an ambassador to the Egyptian court. Venice negotiated for Egyptian tariffs to be lowered to facilitate competition with the Portuguese and suggested that rapid and secret remedies be taken against the Portuguese. How you, I have noticed that when I'm watching a lot of these videos, there's two main religions that keep being brought up in this Christianity and, uh, and, and Islam. It's like they've been like the mainstays for centuries and centuries of uh, at the time now. And another thing too is uh, a lot of the same names of, of countries keep coming up. Egypt, Greece, uh, Mesopotamia, uh, 
or, or places in general, not just countries. But you know, and then uh, just the, the same names keep coming up and stuff, you know. And it's like the same names of uh, countries and the same religions seem to dominate history for centuries there, you know what I mean? And to a certain degree still is. Still is dominating, you hear about the same countries. And then some of them even change names. And you could tell that the name changed, but it's the same region, it's the same countries. You know, same thing with Africa too, you know, you hear pretty much about the same parts of Africa in the, in, in the, in the last few hundred years of history. The sovereign of Calicut, the Zamoran, had also sent an ambassador asking for help against the Portuguese. Egyptian Mamluk soldiers had little expertise in naval warfare, and Portuguese often attacked and stole supplies of Malabar timber from India, so Mamluk Sultan Al-Ashraf Kwanzaa al ghari appealed to Ottoman support. The Ottoman Sultan, Bayezid II, whose navy had helped Spanish Moors and Sephardic Jews expelled by the Spanish Inquisition in 1492 supplied Egypt with Mediterranean-type war galleys manned by Greek sailors and Ottoman volunteers, mainly Turkish mercenaries and freebooters. These vessels, which Venetian shipwrights helped disassemble in Alexandria and reassemble on the Red Sea coast, had to brave the Indian Ocean. The galley warriors could mount light guns fore and aft, but not along the gunnels because these cannon would interfere with the rowers. The native ships, with their sewn wood planks, could carry no heavy guns at all. Hence, most of the coalition's artillery was archers, whom the Portuguese could easily outshoot. The Egyptian Ottoman fleet, whom the Portuguese called under the generic term the Rooms, was sent for India to support Gujarat in 1507. First they fortified Jeddah against a possible Portuguese attack, it then passed through Aden at the tip of the Red Sea, where they received support from the Tahirid Sultan, and then, in 1508, crossed the Indian Ocean to the port of Diu, a city of at the mouth of the Gulf of Compat. In March 1508, commanded by Mamluk Admiral Myrasam or Admiral, the Egyptian Mamluk fleets arrived at Chal in India where they surprised a Portuguese fleet commanded by Lorenzo de Almeida, son of the Portuguese Viceroy. Joined by Gujarat Admiral Malikayaz, governor of Diu, they fought over three days and won the Battle of Chal. The Egyptian fleet isolated Lorenzo de Almeida's ship, but let the others escape, taking nine captives back to Diu. The Mirad Si Kandari, a Persian account of the Kingdom of Gujarat details this battle as a minor skirmish. Having taken the prisoners they headed to Diu. Enraged at the death of his son, the Portuguese Viceroy Francisco de Almeida sought revenge. Precursor to the battle. Diu was a critical outpost in the overall spice trade from India. The Portuguese attempt to establish trade with India would require the breaking of this strongly defended and lucrative trade network. In addition to enforcing Portuguese rule, the battle was undertaken as a personal issue by Portuguese Viceroy Francisco de Almeida to avenge the death of his son Lorenzo at the hands of the Myrasem. He was so enraged at this death that he is supposed to have said, he who ate the chick must also eat the rooster or pay for it. Francisco de Almeida had rushed to chase the Egyptian fleet because Afonso de Albuquerque arrived on December 6, 1508 with orders from the King of Portugal to replace him as the next viceroy. His plan was such a personal issue that he threw Afonso de Albuquerque in jail after being informed of the King's orders, then advancing to the battle. Aware of the danger facing his city, Maligayas prepared his defense and wrote to appease the viceroy, stating that he had the prisoners and how bravely his son had fought adding a letter from the Portuguese prisoner stating that they were well treated. The Viceroy answered Malki Ayaz with a respectful but menacing letter, stating his intention of revenge, that they better join all forces and prepare to fight or he would destroy you. I the Viceroy say to you, honored Meliquis captain of Diu, that I go with my knights to this city of yours, taking the people who were welcomed there, who in Chal fought my people and killed a man who was called my son, and I come with hope in God of heaven to take revenge on them and on those who assist them, and if I don't find them I will take your city, to pay for everything, and you, for the help you have done at Chal. This I tell you, so that you are well aware that I go, as I am now on this island of Bombay, as he will tell you the one who carries this letter. In a double bind, Mali Gaias fearing the destruction of his city, and Myra Semba said in it, they face the Portuguese forces, battle, the Portuguese had 18 ships commanded by the Viceroy, with about 1,500 Portuguese soldiers and 400 local combatants from Cochin. 
The Allied side had 100 ships, but only 12 were major vessels, the rest were small shallow draft craft. After detecting the Portuguese, who approached from Cochin to the north, and fearing their technical superiority, the Egyptians decided to take advantage of the port of Diu and its fort, which had its own artillery. It was therefore decided to stay anchored at the port and await an attack from the Portuguese. This may also have been due to the training of the Egyptians, who were used to the more sheltered bays in the Mediterranean. There they also relied upon land-based artillery reinforcements to defeat the enemy. The Portuguese started the battle with a massive naval bombardment using their onboard artillery, followed by hand-to-hand -hand combat in the harbor of Diu. These Portuguese ships had guns of greater caliber, better artillery crews, and were better manned and better built. The Portuguese naval infantry also had an advantage over the Egyptians, not only because they were heavily armed and equipped, but also because they were seasoned professional seamen. The tough state-of-the-art multi-rig Portuguese carracks and smaller fast caravels had been developed over the previous decades to cope with the storms of the Atlantic Ocean and were bristling with cannons. The smaller Indian Ocean dows and Mediterranean tight galleys launched by the coalition of the Samuthiri Raja, Gujarat and Egypt were no match. The Portuguese ships were able to shoot their powerful cannons and thus dissuade the smaller craft from coming near them. Even when they did come near, the smaller galleys and dows were low in the water, and so unable to board the Portuguese ships, while being sprayed from above with small arms, grenades and smaller caliber cannon. After you know, you know what's fascinating about history? It seems there may be some kind of diplomacy try before it, but it seems like, hey, you know what? I want that trade route. War. <laughs> Let's battle it out. You know what I mean? Let's do that warrior thing, you know, and, and the strongest who could kill the most get the spoils. And uh, it's, it's a certain like that today to a certain degree. You see it in inner cities where, you know, they drive by, 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 hey, look, I'm the warrior, I'm a soldier. You know what I mean? I'm stronger than you, you know? Uh, I'll get the spoils of the trade that we have in here, the drug trade and thing, you know what I mean? But it seems like back then, whole countries sort of partake in stuff like that, you know what I mean? Hey, I'm stronger than you, I have the better boats, I have the better uh, weapons, you know? Uh, it seems like modern times is a, a more implied thing, hey, I got this bomb here and if you mess with us, we're going to drop it on you so nobody does anything really, you know? But uh, back then, it's like, hey, let's line them ships up, let's blow up that harbor, you know what I mean? Let's destroy as many ships of theirs as I can, you know? In these times, it probably less, let's shoot down this plane, let's shoot down that plane, but people seem to be a little bit more hesitant. Hmm. Is that, does that mean we became a little bit more civilized or a little bit more devious on how we go about uh, uh, taking control of, of trade routes and, and, and trade treaties and stuff like that. Now, the battle ended in victory for the Portuguese, with terrible losses on the Gujarat Mamluk Kozakot side, who fought bravely but were at a loss as to how to counter a naval force, the like of which they had never seen before. After the battle, Malik Ayaz handed over the prisoners of Chal, dressed and well fed. To his surprise, Francisco de Almeida, who was ending his term as viceroy, refused his offer to allow a Portuguese fortress be established in Diu, an offer that the Portuguese soon sought ardently, and which he managed to stall for as long as he was governor of Diu. The spoils of the battle included three royal flags of the Mamluk Sultan of Cairo that were sent to Portugal and are even today displayed in the Convento de Cristo, in the town of Tomar, spiritual home of the Knights Templar. The viceroy extracted a payment of 300,000 gold zirafins, but rejected the offer of the city of Diu which he thought would be expensive to maintain, although he left a garrison there. The Portuguese prisoners from the Battle of Chal were also rescued. The treatment of the Egyptian captives by the Portuguese was brutal. The Viceroy ordered most of them to be hanged, burned alive or torn to pieces by tying them to the mouths of the cannons, in retaliation for his son's death. Commenting on the battle after winning it, de Almeida said, as long as you may be powerful at sea, you will hold India as yours, and if you do not possess this power, little will avail you a fortress on the shore. Interestingly, after handing over the Viceroy's post to his successor, Dom Afonso de Albuquerque, de Almeida left for Portugal in November, 1509, and in December, 1509 was himself killed by the Khoikhoi tribe, near the Cape of Good Hope, Africa. 
This battle did not end the Portuguese-Ottoman rivalry. A second naval battle occurred 30 years later in the Siege of Diu in 1538 when the Turks laid siege with 54 ships to the fortress which was built by the Portuguese in 1535, but then after suffering terrible defeats they lifted the siege. Suleiman I the Magnificent sent his Admiral Hussein Pasha for another siege of the fortress at Diu in 1547 which, upon failing, marked the end of Ottoman attempts to expand their influence in the Indian Ocean. Now that was quite interesting there, you know what I mean? And uh, not enough people pay attention to Portuguese history because it was so pivotal, especially uh, during the whole slave trade and, and all the spice trades and all of that, and, and uh, the naval powers that they held, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, I'm gonna leave a link to the description in this video, you all could go check out the video and thing if you all want. Also, uh, if you all like this video and thing, if you all like what I do here, just drop a like in the, uh, in the comment section, all right? And uh, comment down below, you know, tell me what's up, you know, what little you know, what little, you know, and what much you could teach me. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, hey, you know, uh, keep watching here. I'll leave uh, other videos here on Portugal that I've uh, reacted to. And we could learn more about Portugal and take, you know what I mean? In the meantime, y'all take care of each other, all right? Cool runnings.